Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm MT Birchfield, and joining me today is Tim, aka Akavar, and our Sunder on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed to him yet, you need to go subscribe to him. He is in all of our uh, Pokemon MO Sinnoh playthrough seasons. He's been through pretty much every season. I'm thinking since what season three, Tim? Is that right? Yeah, season three, the Universe season. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's Tim's a long time bystander. He just recently has started his YouTube channel up. Probably what about three or four months ago, maybe? Mm-hmm. Something so, like that. All right. So that's what uh, Tim has been a long-standing friend of the channel, friend in real life, and so Tim's an awesome guy. Y'all need to go over, subscribe to him. He'll be linked down in the description and on the end card of this video. So, guys, today we're going to be talking about something somebody in my comment section asked me. They said, I know you did a 2019 um, money-making methods guide, and I was wondering if you could update it for 2020. For, for me, honestly, Tim, I don't think there's a whole lot to update about it, which is why we're doing this style of video. And up in the corner and everything, I'm going to put some of the methods we're talking about. And in the description, I'm going to link a guide by Miramis Friends that goes into greater detail in all this stuff. But we're going to just start by kind of talking about what our preferred methods of making money on the game are. So we're going to go first with what I think is the best method for making money if you don't want to spend money in the game, and that's gym rebattles with the amulet coin. And I know, speaking from personal experience, this is actually how I usually make my money to breed and create competitive teams, Tim. I don't know. I, I think you use a little different method, don't you? Uh, slightly different, yeah. Okay. And, and, and gym rebattles are basically where you get a couple of amulet coins... You go to the gyms in a region that you have beat all the way through the Elite Four. You use a level 100 team, and then you battle those gyms over and over and over again, beating each one of them as you go through the region. You can fly to each town, and uh, you have the amulet coin running while you're doing it. If you do this for all four regions, you'll make over 400000 and I think it's actually getting closer, if I'm not mistaken, with the uh, Unova Morimoto battle. If you don't know where that is, I have a video on that and I'll link it in the description uh, where you can earn about 25k from one trainer. So each of those gives close to, I think, what, about 1100? Is that right? Yeah. And so it's it's been a while. <laughs> I hadn't done a run in a while. But uh, so yeah, right about 400, 450 uh, thousand dollars in Poke Dollars. And that actually helps. Tim, is there anything you want to comment on the gym rebattles? I know uh, you mentioned the difficulty a little earlier. Right. Yeah. If you don't have a level 100 team, it uh, it can be, um, I guess, a little bit more time consuming because you'll actually have to try in some of the battles, and you'll have to, you know, heal your Pokemon and all that. So I haven't done that much. The way I normally make money for our our tournaments, our uh, region playthroughs, usually after I draft my team, I'll catch almost all of my breeders, breed my Pokemon, and sell the breeders I have left over. Mm -hmm. And I'll I'll actually do the, the Ocarina method, buying Ocarinas and selling them on the market to make whatever extra I need to finish my breeds. Okay, all right, so you talked about two different things right there. So let's go ahead and talk about that first one, selling the breeders. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but selling breeders on the GTL, which if you don't know what the GTL is, it's this little thing down here that says Global Trade Link, and you can come on here and you can sell Pokemon. Uh, people will buy Pokemon on here for different amounts. So let's say you are breeding a, uh, I don't even know, let's say a water Pokemon, and it's in the Water A egg group. Well, if you click Water Pokemon, and maybe somebody's looking for a Pokemon with 31 eggs, HP IV. You can go here, search in the Water A group, search the 31 HP, and then your lowest price, see those are selling for 8000 a pop. And people a lot of times will, I know I know some of the bigger ones that people will go after are kind of Magikarps, if I'm not mistaken. They do right. really well, and there's some other easier ones. Is, is there any that you're really familiar with that you've sold, Tim? Uh, honestly, I... Um... I catch a lot of Ralts because you know I have Gallade every, every <laughs> yes, season. Every single season. So yeah, that, that's what I sell most of. Okay. So so Tim does a lot of Ralts and, and how much do you make maybe per Ralts, would you think? 
Well, the market goes up and down a lot. It can be, depending on which stat it is and the state of the market at the time, it can be anywhere from like four to 10,000. Okay. It varies a lot. So four to 10,000. So pretty good prices per Pokemon. And it's not actually as hard to find like a 31 IV Pokemon as you would think. Those are those are the ones you want to sell because they sell the quickest. But right. um, I, think, I think Selling Breeders is a good option on our little list here. And then we're going to talk about the second thing that you talked about, which was selling Ocarinas on the GTL. So do you want to kind of explain that, what that is? Right, so uh, on the market, in the uh, or not on the market, in the gift shop, you can buy Move Ocarinas for 200 reward points. And you can spend like $5 for, I think, 1,000 reward points. I think that's how that works. I think so, yeah. So that gets you two, four, six, eight, four Ocarinas mm -hmm. at 200 points each. So then you sell them on the GTL and uh, just, you know, look up uh, Ocarina on the item listings. Okay. Let me pull and that so the let's see the lowest price ocarina ocarina is selling four hundred thousand a piece. Right. That is pretty much the standard low for ocarinas lately. Mm -hmm. Four hundred four hundred thousand is about what the lowest ones will sell at. You will see some up to like four hundred fifty. Sometimes they'll go over five hundred thousand. Yes, and I was going to say, some of the more odd, like the Rock Climbs or even Rock Smash Ocarinas, they right. will sell way higher than that. I've sold some. I remember one time uh, when I was making... The, actually, the team I've got in my party right now, um, I sold the um, Rock Smash Ocarinas for 550000 a piece. I sold 16 of them on the market and made right. just ridiculous amounts of money. And so uh, that is, I mean, it's really probably if you're looking at wanting to create a team fast and you don't care whether you spend money or not, it's just fun for you. Mm -hmm. You would rather get the breeding done. Ocarinas are the fastest method to getting money. Was the lowest priced uh, Rock Smash Ocarina is 495000 Yeah. So, so, yeah, that's, so if you want to be smart with this, definitely look through all the Ocarinas. Mm -hmm. And I, I would get like one or two of the ones that are priced higher. But the reason why they're priced high is because people don't put them on the market as much because people don't buy them as much. That's so you don't right. want to buy a ton of them because you won't sell them. That's right. But pick up a couple and then pick up the surf and fly that everyone buys. Exactly. Exactly. And those things will always sell. They're always a, a hot commodity. So we're going to move on from there into what I think are some of the, I don't want to say lesser but just not as good as those first probably three that we mentioned uh, as far as either the ease of doing them or the amount of money they pay for the time that you're going to put in. So uh, we're going to look first at Payday and Pickup. I'm not very familiar personally with Payday and Pickup, but I know there's some people who either when they're shiny hunting or they're doing some like item pickups, they will have a Pokemon that has the ability pickup, which, now explain this to me. Can they pick the items up outside of battle? Is that correct? Honestly, that's uh, that's not something I've ever, ever done. Seen. I don't know if it works outside of battle. Okay. I know inside of battle, they'll use Pokemon like Meowth to uh, use Payday and things like that, that actually with, I think Payday's actually doubled with an amulet coin, is it not? Oh, is it? I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. Everybody's going to be like, wow, oh, MJ Birchfield doesn't know anything. But uh, that's also why it's not a method that I really use. I know some people really like mm -hmm. it. But down in the description, like I said, there is a link to Mayor Best Friends. Um, just his money-making guide in general, and that money-making guide covers payday and pickup. So that is an option. Also looking at berry farming. Um, I know berry farming used to be the big money-maker on here. And I actually mm -hmm. had uh, a guy who made a video about uh, my channel, and he was criticizing me for that because he thought I was withholding berry farming from everybody because I, because I, I didn't want people to know about it. But I honestly didn't know about it at the time. This was like two years ago, and um, I, I did not know berry farming was a big thing. But uh, now that I know that it is, it, it from what I've understood, and I've talked to uh, Rodent Ewok. He's told me that berry farming is not as good as it used to be. There's been some nerfs to it. Now, I'm not sure mm -hmm. if you know anything about that. But um, 
Go ahead. I'm sorry. I tried it. Uh, it's a little bit of a headache, I think, because you gotta keep an eye on all your berries. You gotta water them. I think they die if you don't if you don't water them every day. Yeah. And then you gotta break the berries apart, and you get seeds, and you combine the seeds to make certain berries. It's a lot of work, and it doesn't make as much money as it used to. Mm -hmm. So. There are a few people doing it. You know, there's tons of berries on the DTL, and that's good. We need people to do that. It helps a lot. But uh, I don't think it makes money as quickly as just the uh, amulet coin gem rebattles. Yeah, it's a, it's a much more passive come back to it when you have a chance kind of thing, or, or just keep yourself on a time schedule, I would say. And uh, So moving on to the next one, we'll look uh, at thiefing items. This is one that I actually made a video on uh, a little while back about thiefing items. Um, the leftovers from Snorlax. Now, let me say this, because I've had a lot of people who have tried to do the leftovers thieving, and they're like, whoa, what the heck, man? That sucks. And I'm like, yeah, it does mm -hmm. suck. I told them. I said in the video, I said, I never said it was quick. I said that this is how you do it. And so that's what... I had a lot of people asking me in comment sections, how do I get um, leftovers from Pokemon? Personally, I would not recommend thieving at least leftovers there may be better items to thief and I, I'm, I'm probably sure there are like the shards i know there's some people who come here to kanto right here at vermilion and they thief shards from uh like different water pokemon and stuff like that uh but i i don't recommend thiefing items because i think it's just not enough return for the time you're investing you there are better ways now if you've done these other things and you're just a pokey mmoaholic and you're running out of options to make money and you don't want to spend money, then maybe go and thief items? What do you think, Tim? Uh, I think it's it's an option for sure. Uh, heart scales, people are always wanting to buy those. That's another good item. Yeah, that's true. And so it's it's a, it's it's up for debate. I, I would definitely consult the, uh, the, the money-making guide on that. And then, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm looking at the market right now on heart scales. Someone's got 91 at 5,000 a piece. I don't mm -hmm. know how long it took them to get that many heart scales, but that's not a whole lot per heart scale. Yeah, so it's kind of a low price right now. And, and the market's always going to fluctuate, so you never really know how those things will do long term, essentially. Um, all right, so moving ahead, we're going to talk about uh, two that I think are kind of similar in that I think they're they're useful if you've done the gym rebattles and you're trying to make more money, but just doing this every day is actually more of a waste of your time than actually going and re -gym, redoing the gym battles. So that's the NPC rebattles, which are the, the NPCs on the routes. Um, there are certain NPCs you can rebattle every single day and you can carry an amulet coin. I think they actually refresh after six hours. Um, but they are NPC rebattles, so with an amulet coin on, those NPCs can be rebattled. Some of the rich boys give like five thousand a pop. I'm pretty sure it's been a while since I've done that, but mm -hmm. I used to. That used to be my big money making method. That and the uh, Hoenn gym rebattles, uh, and then to go alongside of that, the Elite Four rebattles with the Amulet Coin. And and my problem with the Elite Four rebattles with the Amulet Coin is the Elite Four rebattles take a little bit. Uh, people make the mistake of thinking that after the first time you beat the Elite Four, that they're going to heal your Pokemon, and they're not. They are going to leave your Pokemon broken and sad, and you're going to be broken and sad on the inside when you get destroyed by the uh, Elite Four because you didn't bring revives and hyper potions. So there has to be a little investment right. into something to do that. And then at the end of it, you know, I, I just don't think the payout makes up for the time you spend and for the money you're going to have to pay on items. So I don't think either of those really kind of do what you want them to do. Anything you want to say on those, Tim? I no, you're, you're right. Like, the Elite Four, if you don't have, like, a really good level 100 team, it's going to be tough. You may not even make it through all of them without using revives. So it's really not worth it. Yeah, even if you do, sometimes you don't because it is single battles. It's not like the gyms. It's not double battles. But it's still just a very very difficult uh, set of battles and it requires some revives if you have them. If you can get them without having to spend money on them, maybe from the story playthrough, that would be fine. Mm -hmm. but I don't know how many times you could do that over and over without having to get more. Um, 
Okay, so moving ahead, let's look at the final three here, and we're going to look at the first one. I know you have more experience with this than I do, the Battle Tower and the Battle Frontier. Um, Tim, tell me about the Battle Tower and what you think about it. I think it it can be fun. It's a fun way to, uh, to grind through battles, because you don't actually have to travel all over the region to the different gym battles. Mm -hmm. But instead of a uh, money reward, you're rewarded with uh, the battle points. You use the battle points to buy items like the choice items to sell on the market. But it can take a long time to get those battle points up. And I think the the uh, the value of like the choice items on the market and things like that have kind of dropped recently. Yeah. So it's n still not as good as rebattling the gems with amulet coin. But it's something different if you want to have more fun. Also. You can link up with another person and do a link battle tower and get even more reward points from doing that and, you know, hang out with a friend and have fun. It's still not extremely lucrative by the end of it, but if you're just bored of rebattling the gems, it's something else to do. I, I think so too. And it's it can be fun when you when you have friends and you're doing it and it kinda it's one of those things, but it's like almost like any game, like you could just shut off your brain and play with your friends. It's always fun. Um, so as we look at this, um, there's really only two left, and this kind of goes hand in hand with the Battle Frontier, uh, the PvP ladder. So the PvP ladder is something that I have personally started to invest in. Uh, I think it's fun, but not effective, if that makes sense. Kind of like you said with the Battle Frontier, some of the items that you can buy with the BP, because you receive BP there as well, are... Um, decreasing in price. I just showed on the screen a second ago, uh, choice items are around 126000 right now, where they used to go for about three hundred, four hundred thousand. 400000 um, So their their value has decreased. Uh, the problem with the PvP ladder is you've got to be good at PvP, and you already need a team to compete on the PvP ladder. Now, as you can see, I have Pokemon. All of these are 5x31s. They're, they're really, I mean, pretty good Pokemon in terms of competitive like ability, but I don't run the most meta team in the world, and so I end up kind of having a rough time sometimes on the ladder facing some of the Scizors, Blissies, Skarmories, things like that. Uh, I just don't think the PvP ladder, while it is fun and it's what you want to build your money towards, I don't think it's effective at making money unless you're going to play it for a long time and not try to spend a whole lot. Anything on that, Tim? I've barely gotten into that, but yeah, it's pretty similar to the Battle Tower. You're just doing it for the battle points. If, if that's what you're going to try to make money with, and it's not really worth it. I agree. I agree. I think. And so, now to the last one, and this is one that was suggested to me by Mary Best Friends. I see people doing it all the time in the Hoenn um, Battle Frontier because it's just super easy if you've got a level 100 Pokemon and a Pokemon with Sweet Scent and EXP Share, which is a leveling service. Now, the, the leveling service is basically where, if you'll go, I'll link another video down in the description. I'm linking everything in the description. It's like linking logs now. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm going to link a video down there where we did EV training and leveling up. And the last thing we cover in that video is where to level up Pokemon fast. Pokemon has actually done something pretty awesome recently, which is when you're battling a horde and you knock out all five Pokemon in the horde, you used to have to watch them drop one at a time over and over, and it slowed it down. It was super slow. Well, now they all five drop at the same time, and you get a mass amount of XP on whatever Pokemon is holding the EXP share. So that's always a uh, good way to level your Pokemon up, but it's also a good way to start what's called a leveling service, where somebody gives you their Pokemon, they say, I want this Pokemon to be at level 50. And then you take that Pokemon, you put the XP share on them, and you go there and you level those Pokemon up. Now, the thing about this, and you just, whatever you agree upon as the price is what that person will pay you. The problem with this is, for a lot of people, it requires a lot of trust in the community uh, it requires you to be an active member member of the PokeMMO community, and a lot of people are kind of shy. Most people never communicate, or most people are toxic. And so <laughs> that's usually a big barrier of entry to some people. But if you have some people that you know, or maybe a community or a team that you're working with, I think this works well. I think as long as you have proven that you can be trusted in the game, I think that this is a very good option 
and Mary Best Friends actually has a guide on this as well and goes into detail on it. Anything like you want to add, Tim, or talk about with that? No, I think that's an excellent idea. Okay. All right. So just looking at our list, we've covered pretty much a couple things. I'm going to list them up on the left-hand side of the screen right now. It's going to be gym rebattles with the amulet coin, selling ocarinas on the GTL, payday and pickup Pokemon, um, berry farming, thiefing items, the NPC rebattles with amulet coin, the elite four rebattles with amulet coin, uh, the battle frontier or the battle tower, PVP ladder, selling breeders on the GTL, and the leveling service in the community. So those are my updated 2021 money-making methods. This is the ones I think is the best. Uh, gym rebattles and the um, selling of the ocarinas are pretty much, the, the, in my opinion, the best two. Once the I don't want to spend any money option, the other is I'm fine with grinding. I don't care. So those are pretty much it, and they're pretty good methods right now. So uh, I don't have anything else to say. I don't know if you have anything you'd like to add, Tim, before we go. No, I think that's, uh, you know, Ocarina, Gem Battles. That's pretty much as good as it gets. All right. Well, that works for me. So, guys, thank you so much for watching today. I know it was a little bit longer format of a video, but if you enjoyed it, drop a like down below. Hopefully, you got something out of it. I'll put some timestamps down in the description so you can skip to the part that you want to hear the most. And I guess that will be it for us today. Go to Tim's channel. Subscribe to him. He's awesome. He makes some great content, and he is doing some great stuff over there. So, that's pretty much it for me today. We'll see you guys later. Somebody wants to battle me. Um, but, uh, Tim, if you want to say bye, go ahead. Oh, bye. <laughs> bye, guys. Alrighty. Hey, guys, just really quickly, I wanted to, uh, show you something. This is called the, uh, Losers Club Discord. This is actually me and my friends, our personal Discord. Uh, if you would like to join this Discord, it'll be linked down in the description below. It has everything from updates to my channel to some of the guys who record with me and do a bunch of videos. Uh, they all do some some of their own stuff and they do it well. We have a lot of different stuff here We're going to do a lot of uh, uh, Community oriented things within this actual uh, Discord we've been setting it up getting it ready. Uh, I'm super excited about it So if you want to join go ahead head down to the description join our discord We'd love to have you love to get to know you get to communicate with you And I think it's gonna be an awesome thing likewise. There's also one other thing I wanted to do uh, a buddy of mine, his name is Landon, asked me to shout him out at the end of the video. Landon likes to do uh, a lot of rodeo stuff, so he's good at roping and stuff like that. So if you don't mind, go over, give him a sub, and uh, just say hey to him. Tell him MT Virchfield sent you, and I'd really appreciate that. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We'll see you next time.